Welcome to the .CMS Elasticsearch tutorial. .CMS 2.0 uses Elasticsearch to replace our previous search engine Lucene. Elasticsearch is an open source distributed search engine built on top of Lucene. Elasticsearch helps us provide a better and faster search solution that allows us to start with one server and scale up very easily. You can find more about Elasticsearch at Elasticsearch.org. Since Elasticsearch is built on top of Lucene, you won't need to modify any of your existing search queries. Elasticsearch also provides the ability to scale the index differently how we scale that CMS. What that means is that we can have 10 servers running that CMS and only 3 servers running the index. Another feature is that we separated the index into indexes live and working. This allows you to have a server that is not used for content edits with only a live index. We're also able to ship indexes now between different environments and this is something that in previous versions people requested a lot. What you can do now is you can download an index from one environment and then restore it to another one. Let me show you how this works in .CMS 2.0. From here, we're going to go to CMS Admin, CMS Maintenance, and we're going to click on Index, and this is where we have the information for our indexes. You can see now that we have a list of our indexes. We have a live index and a working index. These are both active right now. You'll see that we have the status. They can be either active or inactive, the index name, and this is the index name, the same name that we'll have on the folder where we keep the indexes on the server. And I'll show you where they are. We have the create, created date for the index. We have a count. This is the number of objects that we have on that index. We have the number of shards and the number of replicas. And I'll explain how this works in a second. Uh, we also have the size of the index and its health. The health can be either green, yellow, or red. The, uh, this color determines the index's health. For instance, let's say that you have two servers and you have three replicas. And what we're saying is that we want to replicate the index three times, but we only have two servers. Since it's not able to do that, because it can only find two servers, then the health will be yellow instead of green. Or if the data becomes corrupted on your index, then the health will turn to red. So let me show you how we can make it yellow. Let me just modify the number of replicas. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click. I'm going to update the number of replicas and I'm going to put here three. And I'm going and I'm running this on a single server. So as you can see now, it went directly to yellow. From this page, you can create a new index by clicking on Add Index here. We can either create a new working index or we can create a live index. Let me click on one so you can see how it works. On this pop-up here, we need to uh, select the number of shards that we're going to use. This number by default is, num is 2 and we can change it once we create the index. We cannot change this number after it's created. So let me change it to four here, just to test. And then I'm going to add a new live index with, let's say three. And so we have a live index and a working index that are empty. They don't have any objects in them with three shards, four shards, and no replicas. And we can modify the replicas like I showed you by just right clicking on it and updating it. So what you can do now is you can right click on the live index for instance and you can download it. So I'm going to click that here and you can see here I have a zip file that downloaded this index. You can take this index and restore it on another environment or you can restore it on your same server. Let's say that we want to restore it here just so you can see how it works. I'm just going to click again right click restore index and I'm going to say here downloads and this is the file 
and I'm going to click here clear existing data and I'm going to upload it. So now it's doing that and if I click on res refresh here you can see now that I have my objects here. I'm going to do the same thing for the working index. Now I'm going to restore and I'm going to do that and I'm going to click here and clear existing data. Even though there's no data there, I think it's a good practice to clear the data so you don't have conflicting data. I'm just going to upload it and then I remember you always have to click refresh so you can click either on this link or here on this button. Now you can see we have the same number of objects on our two live indexes and two working indexes, but only these two are active. So what I can do now is I can switch them. I can right click on this one and activate it. Are you sure you want to activate this index? Yes. And then I can also then go and activate my working index here. What that means now is that the two previous indexes that I had are now inactive and my two new indexes are active. You can also right click to either clear or deactivate an index. Let me clear one of the indexes that are not active right now. I'm going to clear the live one and you'll see that the number of objects here went down to zero. We can also then go and delete it or we can delete one that has data in it. So now you can see we have our two indexes. Now I'm going to show you how to configure Elasticsearch. This uh, configuration variables are going to be stored or found in the that marketing config properties file. So I'm going to open my terminal here and I'm already in the file here and I'm going to show you some of the uh, variables that you may want to modify. Okay, so the first one here is the number of shards. By default we have number of shards set to 2 and we have the number of replicas set to 0. Shards um, are different pieces of the index that Elasticsearch creates on a server. So if you have number of shards 2, that means that when you have one index on your server, it's really being broken down into two pieces. What this means is that it makes your writing, the more shards that you have, the faster your, your writing is going to be because we're writing into smaller pieces. But if you have too many of them, then it could make your um, your disk performance slow or your search performance slow. I'm sorry. Um, the replicas, on the other hand, are the number of duplicates of this index that you're going to have in different service servers. So if you do have, if you have a cluster and you have your number of replicas uh, set to two, then that means that we're writing the index in our current server and then we're also duplicating that into two more servers. So the rule that we're using to select the number of replicas that we want on our cluster is um, we're using half of the number of servers plus one. So if we had 10 servers for instance then that would be um, five plus one that's six replicas that we're recommending. If you have the more replicas you have, you're in, uh, enhancing your search or read performance and you're also improving your cluster availability uh, in case um, that way you have more copies of your index in case there's a disaster and then you have to use another server for your index. We also have the path, no let me see where the path is, oh we also have here the Elasticsearch cluster configuration. Uh, this here you have two ways of doing the cluster. Elasticsearch can either auto discover the servers on your network that are running Elasticsearch or you can tell it which ones it's going to uh, it's going to use for that. Um, we recommend if your network allows you to do multicast that you can do this 
uh, you enable this one. If it doesn't, then we uh, recommend using the unicast and then just entering here the number, um, the names of your servers, of your .cms servers. We also have another variable. Okay, this one, these two. Um, you shouldn't modify these unless you want to save the indexes in another path, but uh, by default, they're, they, this should um, match what you have in the dynamic content path variable, which is where we save most of the generated .cms data. So in this case, we have .cms.secure ES data, and then we have .cms.secure ES data work. So we have, this is the live index uh, folder, and then this is the working index folder. We also have, um, here we have the path for the logs, and some of these other variables you don't need to modify. Uh, for more helpful resources and videos, visit our uh, resources section on the .cms website. From all of us at .cms, thanks for watching.